try it. It's relaxation time, baby. And I'm all comfortable. I literally just want to get to the chair and Kiki. So let's get it. Let's go. All right, T High, thank you so much for joining me again for Talks OT Live. Let's get into our hashtag of the day. That's going to be this word right here, huh, T? And anytime you hear this word, let your inner queer get as drunk as possible. All right, guys, let's jump into it. It's time for Talks OT Yes, honey. All right, first of all, on today's Cross the Talk. We have Drake, honey. Drake is very upset, not a happy camper. There is a young lady who claims that she was pregnated, impregnated child, by Drake, and now he is suing her for making false claims that he raped her and impregnated her. Ooh, this one is really bad, y'all. I'm gonna say Boo needs to calm the hell down. That's what I'm gonna say all the way. Anyways, um... She claims that it was a one night stand and that he had raped her and, and the result of the rape was that she got pregnant. Well, honey, let me tell you something. Let me take you back, honey. In April of 2017, this young lady, Layla Lace, she got on social media and she told um, Je Jezebel TV that Drake ended up impregnating her and pretty much dodging her calls afterward. She had posted up some text messages, and by the way, I am going to post these text messages up with just music behind them on the home channel. It's going to be what we call a receipt post, okay? And um, so she did post up some text messages where they did exchange, um, you know, dialogue or whatever, but there was never like a, 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 a actual relationship according to Drake. Now, this woman had come unto, under fire so hard that she ended up having to delete her entire fucking Instagram, which really disturbs me because I need the tea. But what she's doing is she's going on a campaign from different station to different station to different person to different person, and she is making these claims, okay? She appeared on Sirius XM Radio, and she said that she was 100% absolutely sure that Drake was the father of her child. And then on Tuesday, Drake followed this up. Now, mind you, mind you guys, there was a whole freaking investigation once this woman alleged that she got raped because she wasn't claiming rape at first, okay? When she went on Sirius Radio, she didn't have mentioned nothing of Drake raping her. She just said that he is the father of her child. Anyway, on Tuesday, Drake filed a lawsuit against her, it's accusing her of trying to extort him for emotional distress, for fraud, defamation, and abuse of a court process. Child, you better sue for the court. Yes, Lord. Okay, he claims, okay, hunty, he claims that uh, the two of them, quote, had consensual protected sex after they met each other in Manchester, England. Oh, damn. Okay, hunty, hold on. You mean to tell me that y'all was out in Manchester and they bought this shit back to the States? Nigga, that's baller. That's international gooch. Anyway, um, but he says that he was on tour and he never had any credible evidence of a child or that a child existed. Um, and he also says that if a child did exist, that the child would have been born last fall. Okay. Uh, here is a quote, child. Layla Lace is a former stripper who has spent at least the last year and a half plotting and scheming in her words. This is what Drake has written on his court documents and he's saying that she said this in her own words to him. In her words, she's been plotting and screaming, plotting and scheming to make a field day out of Aubrey Graham's fucking ass. Drake has had enough and he brings this action to stop her in her tracks. Now that is coming from what the court document says, okay? Also in the court documents, he says that this girl went absolutely ballistic on Drake at her sending for, for Drake sending her home after he had sex with her instead of allowing her to continue to go with him on his tour. Now he sent her an apology text message and then 
uh, she continued to text message him. He said this girl made a relationship between them two in her head through the dialogue on the text. But then he said a month later he stopped texting her. And then all of a sudden she popped up saying that she actually had her lawyer to contact Drake's lawyer, Aubrey's lawyer, to say, hey, if you don't give me a couple of thousand dollars, I'm going to start telling people about this investigation. So first she was trying to get some money out of him for a baby that doesn't exist. And then, then secondly, she was trying to get money out of him for her silence in order to not tell the story after the investigation was done. And she actually had her lawyer to follow through with these insane accusations against uh, Drake and even asking him for money. Girl, what the hell is going on with you? Um, he says that he, she refused to take a pregnancy test, and, uh, it, 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 she, but she keeps indicating that this is her child. He said a month later after he refused to give her money for her silence, she came out with these accusations of rape, saying that he had raped her, and that's what's causing him to sue her. Honey, let me tell you something. That Me Too movement ain't no bullshit, okay? These women out here, I don't know what's going on, but this is the worst I've ever seen it with these girls, with this Me Too shit, with these women, because they think because they got a fat ass, that means they're supposed to be messing with, you know, rappers and all this stuff. When the ass don't belong to you in the first place, you don't have a fat ass. You have a lot of plastic, okay? You got a lot of a lot of uh, fillers, baby, okay? You, I mean, just this is bad. I mean, the culture is getting a lot worse. It's, it's a super problem. It's sad. It's sad. But I hope that Drake gets some money out this bitch. You trying to get money out of Drake? I hope Drake gets money out of your ass, and he needs to send a cease and desist order immediately. Where the hell is that? Okay, Drake, pay your lawyer to do his job, because where the hell is the cease and desist letter? Shit's going too far out here in this country. All right? Anyway, uh, let's move on. Let's move on. So, I have posted something up on my main channel earlier, Toxic Diamond. And uh, apparently, T.S. Madison and Funky Dineva went live on Monday, as they do. As you guys know, I don't want to hear not one more person say, is you live whore? If I hear Queen fucking radio start saying, is you live whore? I'm going to jump out of my skin and jump back in as somebody else. I might jump in as Tiana Taylor and start going the fuck off. I mean, I just don't know. All I'm saying. Anyway, um, so... They have made some comments on this live about the Braxtons, about Ayanna, really, and um, about Tamar and stuff. And I have I have my own opinion about this Tamar and Ayanna thing, and it has changed based on last night's episode, but I'm going to get into reality in a minute. Let me tell you guys about this. Now, I did post it up where uh, Funky Dineva and Tamar and also T.S. Madison had a back and forth. Okay, what happened was Funky Dineva and T.S. Madison were live. They were happy doing the show. The next thing you know, Tamar jumped in on the live. And I also just posted this on my home channel as well. Tamar jumped in on the live because some of her fans hit her up, letting her know that they were making fun and laughing while they were speaking in regards to her molestation. Now, I will say I didn't see them make any bad comments about the molestation, but they were laughing for sure. Okay. Um, however, when Tamar jumped in, honey, Funky Dineva went the hell off. Tamar jumped in and called Funky Dineva ashy and said, what did your ashy ass friend say about me? All of a sudden, honey, woo wait. When I tell y'all that Funky Dineva ass went in, and honestly, I'm going to keep it real with y'all, that made me not like him even more because he made a comment about... The, the young man who got shot in the chest in front of his son by the old white man for uh, when, when his girlfriend had pulled up into the handicap stall and the white man, you know, sometimes Caucasian people don't know how to mind their fucking business and let people live. I don't know where they got that nosiness from. It's not okay. This man was not handicapped, nor he did, did he need the handicapped space. He walked up to this man's woman. He started yelling at her, and this man was in the store with his son. The man came out the store, saw this man yelling at his woman, 
pushed a man. The man shot him in the middle of the chest. The man stumbled in the store and died in front of his son. And fucking Nineveh had some really nasty comments to make, like saying that it was the young man's fault for basically for defending his woman. Now, I'm not going to lie. He shouldn't have put his hands on that man. Okay, but at the end of the day, just because you push somebody don't mean you need to get shot and killed. That's fucking ridiculous. And I didn't agree with the comments that Funky Dineva made about that. So that already made me have a comment, you know, an opinion about Funky Dineva. But when Tamar jumped in and said, what your ashy friends say, I think he went all in based on their previous experience together. And I don't know, Funky Dineva. I'm, I'm a, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know because because I got and then, and then and then I'm not on Tamar's side because I have my opinions about Tamar and I'm gonna tell y'all that when reality gets here because you know what you know I'm gonna do reality segment in a minute but they both have their ways about them that makes me feel both ways about them okay I'm I'm non-biased because I'm fucking in the middle on, on both of their ass. What I'm going to say is that Funky Dineva and T.S. Medicine were definitely laughing. And Tamar obviously is hypersensitive about the molestation issue. And that's that. I'm going to move on. Oh, also what I'm going to say is that they did both apologize to each other. Thank you guys for doing that. That shows a lot of growth in our community. Um, Alright, Justin Bieber and Haley Baldwin. These two... Now, regardless of what the reports say, they are having a prenup, okay? They're experiencing an awkward moment in their journey down the aisle because these two have gone to get their marriage license, as we know. However, something stopped Justin Bieber in his tracks because Justin Bieber now is drafting up a prenup. These two have gone and, go, gone and gotten their own lawyers, thank goodness, because we need the young people to be smart Especially when you have as much money as Justin Bieber does, okay? Um, but they, they are getting a prenup. And there's a lot of reports out here right now saying that these two are not getting a prenup. That they're just going to get married. And that is, those are fake reports. That's not true. Justin Bieber is going to get a prenup. Mark my freaking words. Just like when I told y'all way ahead of time that Kenya Moore asked was pregnant. She was pregnant. Just like a lot of stuff that I tell y'all. It be true. Just like when I told y'all that basketball wise, when they said she, Evelyn slept with Shawnee Evans. They was talking about Shaq. Y'all swore up and down they was talking about Marlon. No, listen to the girl. Don't listen to the bullshit. Listen to the girl. Okay? Anyway, so they uh, did go get a prenup to protect their assets. They're con consulting different lawyers, which has made things really awkward between the two. Justin, of course, he wants his prenup for a very good reason. And although they did get their message, marriage license, like I said, they're not rushing through the thing. Okay? The prenup is going to separate their assets throughout the entire marriage. So these two will never have to worry about getting uh, burned by each other if something goes wrong. You must you must admit that a lot of these times things go wrong, okay? Justin Bieber is worth about $275 million. Haley is worth a, a $2 million. So that's a lot of money. I don't give a damn if it's a, 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 a $250 million, $275 million, or just $2 million, or $1 million, or a half a million. Protect your damn assets, honey. And I'm happy that Justin Bieber is doing so. Kudos to you, young people. If you're going to do the shit, do it right. Let's move on to Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey just lost his show, his talk show, to Kelly Clarkson. Now, I heard about this about four or five days ago, y'all. Okay? People have been sending me DMs wanting me to talk about this. Um, she's Kelly Clarkson. First of all, let me just allow you guys to know this. Kelly Clarkson has been preparing for this show for two months. This show is about to be in 11 different states in the United States. Do you know how much time it takes to get that much footing under a show? Okay? Which means that this is not something new to them. This is new to Steve Harvey. Okay? Steve Harvey, let me tell you what he did. Let me tell you where he messed up at. Okay? Steve Harvey was so traumatized. Uh, obviously, I guess after the incident with the with the woman, with the reporter that wanted him to apologize, Emma something, I forget the name slipped in my mind. Um, but I guess Bill Cosby whole damn thing definitely traumatized the boy and made him paranoid. 
because Steve Harvey was in Chicago at his TV studio and he ordered his entire female staff to dress a certain way. He wanted the female staff to refrain from speaking to him in his dressing room or in the hallways. They were only allowed to have conversations over a phone or intercom with him in order to avoid the Me Too movement. And also after that, Steve Harvey decided to fire his entire Chicago staff and move his show to L.A. Once he moved his show to L.A., the antics that he did in Chicago followed him and his ratings dropped. Therefore, they don't want to carry his show anymore. And so they've been preparing for two months to replace him with Kelly Clarkson. And guess what? A lot of people still love Kelly Clarkson. She's one of the original winners of that uh, American Idol and a lot of people are going to watch her. A lot of people want to watch her bust a damn note on this show. A lot of people want to see, you know, the difference in her face. How is her personality now? What is she presenting to us? What is she bringing different than Steve Harvey uh, can bring? And you know what? I, I, I think she can bring something different, hunty. Okay. But I'm going to tell you guys this. She has made a couple of statements and I want to read them out to you. Okay, she said, I love connecting with people, playing games, music, finding ways to help or give back to the community or organizations. Having my own talk show where I get to do all of these things is pretty much a dream job. The girl has ran into her dream job. Y'all know what I hate and I really hope that this is not happening. Obviously, I'm sitting in front of a green screen and I really hate when the screen reflects off of this part of the dresser like I truly really honestly truly hope that that's not happening right now it gets on my last nerve child last okay anyway um let me move on Will Smith Will Smith is now doing stand-up comedy you guys he actually you know he's a rapper he's an actor I know him from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air I mean I tried to record it so that my kids can actually watch that show so that they can see that's a cool ass teenage show. You know, my sons are 14 and 15. They would really like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but because it's so old of a show, they're not really sitting down giving it the attention that it deserves. But believe me, Hansi, it deserves all the attention, attention up in the world, okay? But anyways, um, he is now taking the stage at Dave Chappelle's comedy show in West Hollywood at the Peppermint Club. This show is called The Process. And uh, Cat Williams is a part of this show as well as LeBron James, honey. Who knew LeBron was that funny? Go, boy. All right, anyway. Um, all right, take a look at Will Smith's stand up comedy sketch really quickly, and then I'll come back. being a down ass chick for Will Smith doing what she got to do and supporting her husband through whatever journey he takes and that the, my folks is the absolute definition of stability honey that's what we all looking for girl I respect you all right guys that concludes Tox topics listen if you guys are not on Tox OT live YouTube channel head over there right now for the full show if you are honey let's keep going let's get into we have <laughs> yes, sir. All right, listen, we are only going to be talking about one thing for this reality segment, and that is last night's episode of the Braxton Family Value. Let's start off with the light shit. First of all, Tiffany, New York Pollard, and Flavor Flav are on this episode, honey, and New York is acting a crazy fool over this man still. I said, girl, he ain't want you the first time. He ain't want you the second time, and you gonna give this man a third time, hunty, to dump your ass on a whole nother show? My God. I mean, Flavor Flav had to pull her ass to the side and tell her, look, bitch, I'm married, okay? I don't want you. Leave me alone. Then he spent an extended time in Tracy Braxton's tent in order to show Tiffany visually, like, look, I'm serious, girl. I'm not even trying to talk to you out here, okay? But what I can say that I know about Flavor Flav is that the entire time he was doing those shows, 
flavor of love, he was already with the little Hispanic woman that he's still with right now. So I don't think she's going anywhere, nor is he. She puts up with Flavor Flav antics very well. New York, he don't want that. You can't handle that, man. You can't even handle him not being your man. Child move on. Oh, and I also want to talk about the fact that afterward, Tiffany actually said on the uh, Boss Up On We TV that her, she has a man and she was doing all of this and that her actual boyfriend at home was actually upset to hear her saying how she felt when Flav said that he called him peanut butter because he's smooth and she said she just want, she remembers peanut butter going down her throat and all that stuff. She just want to eat peanut butter all night. Her actual boyfriend was sad to hear that. Ew, I would have dumped you. Okay, now anyway, and I love you, but you would have been out of there. All right, so really let's get down to the needy greedy of this episode, okay? The Braxton sisters, Tony, Tawanda, and Tracy, they met up. And they were talking about how Tracy, uh, uh how T T Tawanda and Trina, they met up. They were talking about how Tracy dogged them out. And let me tell you guys, I'm getting confused on their names, but I have the same situation. I have Denise, Denisha, Denitra, Denita, Danica, and Denasia. Okay, and Brandon. My family is the, the Jackson family five and the Braxton families, okay? Five sisters and one brother, the same shit. Okay, so I understand the dynamic that that family is going through. Anyways, believe me, I understand firsthand, and if I'm anybody in that family, it probably would be Tamar and or Tracy, depending on how you look at whoever you feel like, uh, whoever you feel like, it's either one of them. It's a mix between, I'm, I'm the mix between the role between Tracy and Tamar. It's, it's a bad role, but it is what it is, and, and somebody got to play it. All right, let's talk about it. The sisters sat down. They actually talked about the fact that Trina did not inform them that she was going to be working on the show after they had all sat down to agree. Now, these girls are upset and mad at it. And you could even see that Tony was upset because Tony had pretended like she was going on a hiatus in order to work at, on another project, but she herself wasn't even coming in to work. Okay, um, but... The way that they reacted about the christening, because Tracy also had a christening for her grandson, okay? And they uh, they were upset because they weren't invited, rightfully so. But it was like, oh, Michael's invited. Mikey was invited? Really? Oh, my! Oh, because that was going to be a big problem. That left me so skeptical. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I felt like when Tamar sat down on Wendy Williams' couch and she admitted that she had been molested, by somebody in her family, both sides of her family. Okay? I felt like that could be one person she's talking about. And I'm not saying it was Mikey, but what I'm saying is the boy don't come around. They are looking at him sideways. And I feel like, well, did something happen to first of all, I feel like like Tamar, like that didn't only happen to Tamar. It happened to more than one of them and probably didn't happen to Trina because she probably wasn't uh she was left out of shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. My mind went every which way. I know I'm probably wrong as hell for saying that, but I truly, truly felt like what is going on that you guys would be acting, reacting like that at your brother coming to his nephew's christening and, and, and you guys not being invited. What is that saying in y'all's relationship? And why wasn't your brother there during the Ayana session? Now, I feel like probably more than one of the sisters had something happen to them. And if you look at the last scene when Tamar was talking to Tawanda and she was saying, we all have pain, she literally winked at her like, we all have pain. You know, she tried to wink with this eye because the camera was this way. But something else is going on that these sisters are hiding. It's deep, it's dark, and they do not want that shit to come out to the light. Believe that. Now, what made me change my mind about this with Tamar? First of all, Okay, Tawanda sat there. T Tamar claimed that Ayanna was digging too deep. She was getting in her business. She was doing too much. She was finding shit that they didn't want to talk about to bring up. But Tawanda literally said on the episode of Braxton Family Values last night that she wanted somebody that was going to dig deeper than anybody had ever dug before. They wanted somebody that was going to pretty much bring the skeletons out the grave, baby. He had a zombie standing up in that bitch, okay? All right, hunty. And, and, and let me tell you this. That's exactly what Ayala does. Now, do I think Ayala does too much? Hell yeah. 
But literally, literally, I don't feel like the other people, like, I don't feel like Nephi, Keisha Cole's sister, asked to be called a gutter snipe by Ayama. But I just heard to Wanda with my own fucking ears say, I need somebody that's going to not take our shit. I need her to bring up shit she ain't gonna bring up. I need her to do shit that no people normally wouldn't do. I heard her say that. Therefore, I've had all this opinion about Ayama. Ayama does this. Ayama does that. She does. But you asked for this in this case. And therefore, I feel like Tamar is doing too much. In this case, that changes my opinion about you. You're hypersensitive. You overreact. And that's the same thing that she did with Funky Gyneva. And this is the shit that I'm talking about that I don't like. Come on, Tamar. Come on with that, you guys. But anyway, they got what they asked for. And that's the conclusion of reality. Really quickly, y'all know I had to do it, baby. Let's hop into the shit list. Okay? Everybody out here ain't right. All right, let's hop into this shit list really quickly. First of all, while we were going ahead and talking about Bossip on We TV, Stevie J goes on my shit list first. Why? Because Jocelyn said on Bossip on We that Stevie J has not seen his daughter in five months. Now, we all know that Stevie J recently got married. And child, if you got married and went on a goddamn honeymoon and never came back to see your children, child, that's going to be a problem, okay, auntie? I'm going to need you to bounce your ass to Florida, Miami, and go ahead and get over there and see that baby because you know she needs you. Have you seen Jocelyn on this show? She's still the same gutter rat that she always been, popping her pussy, looking at pussy all over the place, auntie. Okay, and last night, on last night's episode, I said, who the fuck is this? Last week's episode, this bitch had a whole stripper in there. This week's episode, this bitch talking about she stayed prayed up, she prayed for her man. And she in there cooking dinner talking about can she be wholesome. No, bitch, you can't be wholesome. But I love you, Joss. Anyways, second on the shit list goes to Wanda Bar Z, the old ass bitch who kidnapped Elizabeth Smart when she was 14 years old and watched her get raped by the other kidnapper, okay? She was recently released from prison after I think about 20 some odd years. Anyway, it wasn't even 24 hours after this lady got released from prison, the police were called on her again at her hotel room because she was screaming praises to some religious person. That's not my God. You wasn't praising God, then you wasn't praising God. But listen up, Wanda Barcy. You're on the shit list because if you had a goddamn religious bone in your body, that shit would have never crossed your mind to allow it to take place for you to kidnap some young girl, ruin your life and hers, and, 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 and just have the whole world all in your face, all in your business. That's what your ass get. I don't feel like you should have got out at all. Because you got one time to even look towards my daughter. Don't let me see your ass. If you look towards my daughter, bitch, I'm not uh, Wanda, I'm not uh, Elizabeth Smart's daddy. You have another thing coming with your old ass. You on the shit list. All right, and another person is Wanda Smith from V103's husband, Lamoris Sellers, is on the shit list. Why? Nigga, Cat Williams is four foot five. Your ass is six foot five, 300 pounds. Why the hell are you chasing this little man around the streets with a goddamn loaded pistol? Something is wrong with you mentally. Wanda, get your man and lock his ass up before the police do. Wanda, don't think you are not on the shit list. You are also on the shit list because your ass got so butt hurt off of some jokes that you took that shit off the radio, then you came back on the radio to try to say that they should have never showed that shit on the website in the first place. Girl, that's what we do in the media. Shit list, check yourself before y'all wreck yourself. All right. Hey, the clip that cracked me up this week was Cardi B. Check it out. Wake the fuck up! Yes! Offset, wake your dirty ass up! Alright, guys, let's get into that hashtag of the day. That was this word, hunty. I don't know how many times I said it, but you should be well and drunk. Child, do you know my channels? One, two, three. Go ahead and follow all of these channels for the latest tea and updates on not only your favorite celebrities, but myself as well. Make sure you head over to the website, toxot.com, and check this shit out. I have a little bit of promo for you guys. Rockanitagift.com, where you can get all of your items personally.
personalized, put your name and your message on these items in order to have a hell of a keepsake that you can keep for the rest of your life. All right, guys.